Hi guys, welcome back. Today I have a Range Rover Dash Doll. So this is to go with the door cards that I covered for the car from Bahrain. Now I haven't had the car from Bahrain, I've just had the door cards. But this is going on the same car. This hasn't been sent to me from Bahrain, it's been purchased in England second hand. Now it was a right hand drive car it came from. So a few of the things are going to be swapping over. I need to first remove this metal strip here along this leading edge and the same with the one that's underneath. I've also covered the centre console um, that's going with this car. They have been sent from Bahrain and I'm also doing the steering wheel. So I'll leave a link to all the videos in the description. Once I've removed all the metal parts, it's going to need a prep. So I'm going to have to give it a sand down, a wipe over with acetone. Then I will make a pattern of it and glue the leather on. So I've removed those off the front edge. I need to now remove this one here. I'll put all these to one side now. now I'm going to get rid of this Range Rover here. I'll first try White Spirits. It's quite filthy. Well, the surface of this is showing its age. You can see that it's coming off. It's going to need a very good sand. This is just because of the sun. It's made the top surface very, very brittle. Now there's going to be a lot of prep just to get rid of this weak surface that's on the top. The top part where it's been right up against the sun is a lot weaker than, than this edge here. And which you would expect really to have more direct sunlight. So if I was to use the glue leather straight onto this surface, it generally wouldn't stick. The glue would probably eat into this, this weak surface and then it would just release because it's not sticking to anything stable. So that's why when you're gluing down to anything, you need to make sure that the surface underneath is suitable for what you're gluing. So this is going to be quite a long process. So I'm not going to make you watch all of it. I will get on with this. Could take me another couple of hours yet to prep this properly, get to a point where I can start to do the leather work. So I'll let you go for now and I'll come back to you when I'm ready to put the leather on. So I'll see you in a bit. So I've done all the prep on the dash. I now need to take a pattern because I can't, I can't wrap this part in leather here. The recess is too deep. So I'm going to have to make this as a separate panel and stitch it to the dash top. Now, it is a symmetrical dash, so I've phoned halfway, put a line in, and then I'm going to just pattern half of it and use the half pattern to cut the leather out. So I've just put some double-sided tape onto the dash to hold the patterning plastic in place.
I'm just cutting away this bit here. I don't actually need this bit. Just makes life easy to see what I'm doing now. So I'm just finding the edge here. So I'm just going to dash in this line here where the where the seam will be. I can just about see the black line that I put on underneath. I can remove the pattern now. Put that to one side. I need to pattern this inside now. I'm just going to use a bit of glue for this. Um, I'm not put a lot on. Just enough to allow the plastic to stick. I'll remove all that glue that I'll put on later. So I've just got to join the dots now. Time again with this pattern, just join the dots.
So I'm going to split this hide right down the spine, generally with leather. The spine is where the best quality leather comes from. Anything around the belly area usually has stretch marks on it. So it just makes life easier working with half a hide rather than a full hide on the bench. And I would, I would use the spine anyway for something like a dash top. Once I've split it, I will flip it back over onto its good side, check it for any imperfections, scars, brands, whatever, little holes. Mark on the leather where those are, if there are any, and then I can cut around them. I'm gonna pre-stretch this leather out on the bench. Or well, when I place the leather onto the dash, it is stretched already. So that's why cutting into two halves just makes life easier to try and stretch a hide out. Give it a stretch. I don't want to overstretch it, but I just want to put a nice amount of stretch in. So, happy with that now. The stretch that I've put into that. I've just put a line in there just for square. That's my centre point. So, I'm going to add extra to the end of the pattern here so I can tuck it underneath the dash top. Extra to these edges as well for the same reason and extra to this outer edge here. I'm going to tape the pattern to the leather. So now that that pattern's pin, uh, taped to the leather, I can draw around this pattern. Obviously I had, I had just a seam allowance along this edge here. Put the match marks in, flip the pattern over, do the same on the, the other half of the pattern, and then cut out the pieces for sewing in here. Sew it together, and then attach it to the dash. Easy peasy. So I will have to thin these seam allowances quite a lot on both pieces. Now I can flip this pattern over and do the other half.
So I now need to cut two of these out. So seam allowance along the top edge and then extra around this bottom edge. So well, that's that piece cut out now. <clears throat> I'll put it to one side, cut the other two pieces out, do the thinning of the leather, and then sew it together. That's two. So the pieces are now cut out and I have thinned the edges. So I've thinned around this edge here and the corresponding edge on the bigger piece. I need to sew them together, apply glue to the leather and then apply glue to the dash top, let it go tacky and then glue them down. So yeah, I'll start the sewing now.
So that's the sewing done. So as always with anything that is sewn together and needs gluing, you just do a quick test fit just to make sure things are gonna glue fine. It just gives you a chance to to see how you're gonna glue it really as much as anything else. Okay. So I'll probably end up with this having to use a brush on parts of it. I'll spray what I can up and then the rest I will I will just brush on. I'll spray some glue just into a pot. So I'll let this glue go tacky now and then I'll start to attach the leather. Um, gonna need steaming while I'm doing it. So wish me luck with this one. Never done one of these before. So we'll see how it goes. I'm just going to try and get it into a, a reasonable position. 
might have to be quite a lot of tweaking with this, adjusting. Once I've got this one seam in the correct position, life should become a little bit easier. Right, steamer on.
Now I'm just trying to lay this seam on as straight as I can. Just doing this by feel more than anything else. So all this here might get trimmed away because we find the grab handle, the grab handle goes over the top of this. So how much clearance I've got when the leather's on, I don't know. That's not too bad. Now it's time to start trimming where I need to trim and then I can flip it over and glue underneath where I need to glue. So I'll leave these to last where the heat vents go. Flip it over now. So I need to glue along this edge here as well. Same on the opposite side here. I'll turn it over on the back, but I won't put that all the way under. I don't think just because the metal strip is be very tight getting it on if there's two layers of leather, but I want to turn it enough so it will actually not 
push the leather off when I put the metal strip on. And I'll just brush the glue onto here now. So I'll let that glue go tacky for a little while and then I'll start to pull all the pieces over. So I'm going to unpick this seam here. I don't need the both parts of the seam. So I'll unpick it. I'll do the same with this seam here and the same seam on the opposite side as well. So I'll flip it around and glue this edge here. So I'm just going to give it a clean off. It'll probably need another one at some point. I'm 
And up over the water around here, we've got really hard water, so it leaves chalk marks all over things when you steam them. So I need to deal with these corners where the vents are at some point. I'll let all the, everything, the glue go hard, properly hard, and then I'll deal with them. I'll do any final trimming, like the vents. So I've fitted the metal strip. Now I need to trim where the vents go That's one done. Need to trim off this excess here as well. I'm going to unpick the seam here to about this point here, turn on the opposite side here and trim off the excess. <clears throat> All I need to do now is to put a little strip across here and the same on the opposite side. So this bit here, you can just see where the leather edge is showing around here. I'll touch all these up with a bit of leather paint. So that's where the grab handle goes, so I'm going to check it with the grab handle. So yeah, it just needs a little bit along the bottom here. So I need to make a new one of these, but in, we're gonna do it in brown leather. So we'll have brown leather on the grab handle on this side here. And then where the steering wheel is, that'll be brown and black leather combination. So it'll tie in.
So this is going to be the last clean and we're done. So that's the Range Rover dash now complete, ready to get packed up with the centre console and the steering wheel that have been leathered for the same car. So if you want to see those two videos, please hit the notification bell, like and subscribe, and I hope to see you again. Thank you for watching. Bye.